Welcome to this video from Edureka, which will explain hash graphs to you. So without wasting much time, let's jump into the video. Okay, so this figure that you see on the left hand side of your screen is a hash graph. So a hash graph is basically a distributed ledger technology that was developed by Lehman Baird, the co-founder and CTO of the Swirls Technology Group in 2016. So in short, it's basically a closed source patented software that has been marketed by the Swirls people as a near replacement for blockchain. Whether it is a true replacement or not, that we'll see over time. But for this video, let's see how Hashgraph actually works. So first of all, a Hashgraph has members. So our members here are Alice, Bob, Carol, and Dave, and they're represented by the four lines that are going upwards on the left-hand side. So in this example, these guys are actually represented by A, B, C, D that are below each line, and each member starts by creating an event, which is a small data structure in memory, and it is represented on the diagram by a white circle. Now, each event is a container for zero or more transactions. The community runs a gossip protocol, which means that each member repeatedly calls the other at random to sync with them. Now, the goal of the hash graphs consensus algorithm is for members of the community to come to a consensus or agreement on the order of the events and thus the order of the transactions inside the events and to agree on a timestamp for each event too. So it should be hard for an attacker to prevent consensus or to force different members to come to a different consensus or to unfairly influence the order of the timestamps that are agreed upon. Now let's take a moment to understand the gossip protocol visually. Now in this case, Bob randomly chose to call Dave and when they connected over the internet, Bob sent all the events he knew that Dave did not yet know. In this case, it was just one event, the one that Bob had created at the start. Now Dave records the fact that this sync happened by creating a new event, and this is the new circle which has lines going straight down to his last own event and diagonally down to Bob's last event. Thus, the graph of events form a record of how the members have actually communicated. Now Dave's new event is illustrated here. Firstly, it contains a timestamp and digital signature. Secondly, it has the transaction itself. Now an event is a data structure containing the two hashes of the events below itself. In this case, it contains the self parents hash that is Dave's first event and the other parent that is Bob's first event. Now the events can optionally contain zero or more transactions that Dave wants to send to the network. So an event is a container for transaction. Dave puts all the timestamps of when he created the event and when he digitally signs it too. Now when this event is gossiped, the signature is sent along with it. Dave then sends Bob all his events, including the new one that he just created. So that looks something like this. Now Bob then creates a new event recording the fact that they synced and including the hashes of the most recent event by himself and the most recent event by Dave. So basically Bob's new event will have the hash of this event down here and this event that Dave had created right now. Now Bob randomly chooses Alice and sends her all the four events that he knows about. Now she creates a new one as this continues forever and the graph grows like a directed acyclic graph that only grows upwards. So this is a graph connected by cryptographic hashes and therefore it is called a hash graph. Each event contains the hashes of the event below it and it is digitally signed by its creator. So the entire graph of hashes is cryptographically secure. It can always grow but the older parents are immutable and as strong as the cryptographic hash and the signature system used. It is useful to now define a round created for each event. A child never has a round created before one of its parents. So as time flows upwards in the diagram, the round created can only stay the same or increase. I'll explain how rounds are created in just a moment. But the important point is that as soon as you receive an event in sync, you can immediately calculate its round created and anyone else receiving it will also calculate it by the same number. So now let's understand witnesses. So the first event that a member creates in each round is called a witness. Let's color Alice's witnesses yellow. So all the yellow dots that you see on the left hand side on the hash graph are Alice's witnesses. So A1 would be the witness in round one, which is out here. Then A2 would be the witnesses in round two and A3 is the witness in round three. Now let's also create witnesses for the other members. Okay, it's also possible for a member to have no witnesses in a given round. And now let's see the other witnesses that we're going to have. So the red ones are Bob's witnesses and they are also similarly B1 in round one, B2 in round two, B3 in round three and B4 in round four. Similarly, Carol's witnesses are colored green and they are C1, C2 and C3. 
and these witnesses have been colored brown which are d1 d2 d3 and d4 now every witness has a property by which it is known to the network so a witness can either be famous or not famous now let's see how we can actually calculate fame for each and every witness so for each witness we need to determine whether it is a famous witness or not now for example we will be determining the witness b2 is famous or not so it's this red dot right out here the witness of b in the round two so this is done by considering the witness in the next round so the fame of b2 will be determined by considering the witnesses a3 b3 c3 and d3 so the idea for b2 to count as famous is that it should be seen by many of the witnesses in the next round so there is now an election now in which most of these witnesses will vote on whether b2 is famous now there will be a separate election for every witness to determine its fame the witness of A3 can be seen by B2, and that means that there's an entirely downwards path. So as you guys can see that A3 has a downwards path, which is represented by green out here. So A3 will vote yes. Now next, B3 also has a direct downwards path to B2. So B3 will also vote yes. Next, C3 also has a direct downwards path to B2. So C3 will also vote yes. And Similarly, D3 will also have a direct downwards path to B2, so D3 will also vote yes. Now, all four witnesses have voted yes, so we would expect that B2 will be declared to be famous. But the election isn't over yet. An election isn't over until the votes are actually counted. So the votes will be counted by the witnesses in the following round. So that means the votes collected in round three will be counted by the guys in round four. So the votes will be counted by the witnesses in the following round, as I just said. So B4 will be counting the votes and D4 will be also counting the votes. Now the hash graph doesn't yet have an A4 and a C4, but as time goes on and more gossiping occurs, there may eventually be an A4 and C4 and they will count the votes too. Now B4 will collect the votes from every round three witness that it strongly sees. Now to strongly see a witness, it isn't enough for there to be only a single downward path to the person that he is collecting the votes from. So there must be enough different paths to it so that together the paths go through a supermajority of the population. Now, supermajority is any number that is more than two thirds of the population. And in this example, there are four members in the population. So any three of them constitute a supermajority. Now, in this example, B4 is strongly seeing A3. The red path goes from B4 to A3 through Alice and Bob, and the other red path goes through Alice, Bob, and Dave, as you just see out here through the animation I have created. There are no paths from B4 that go through Carol to get to A3, but that's okay because Alice, Bob, and Dave make up a super majority. So Carol isn't really needed. In fact, the second red path alone would have been enough. So therefore, B4 collects the vote from A3, which is a yes, and now B4 will also try and see the votes from B3. So let's see if now B4 can strongly see B3 or not. So first of all, B4 has his first red path completely down through B3, which goes from Alice and Bob. And it also has a second path, which uses Dave. So B4 certainly strongly sees B3, and it will also collect the vote, which is yes. Now B4 will also try and collect the vote from C3. So first it will check if it strongly sees C3. Now it has a path which goes from Bob, Dave, and Carol. So basically B4 also strongly sees C3. Now let's try that same thing for the four members. That is Bob, Alice, Carol, and Dave to go through actually D3. So B4 will definitely count the votes from D3, which is also a yes. At this point, B4 has received a yes vote from a super majority. So B4 decides that the election result is a yes. So this means that the consensus has come to the decision that B2 is indeed a famous node. Now, if B4 had seen three yeses and one no, it would still decide yes because that's a super majority. If B4 had seen three yeses and no other votes because it couldn't strongly see one of the other witnesses, it would still decide yes because that's also the super majority. Now, it's important to understand that for B4 to actually have a chance at deciding whether B2 was or A3 was famous or not, or B2 was famous or not, it would have to strongly see a super majority of the witnesses. Now, if an event X has a parent with a maximum round created of R, then that event will usually belong to that round too. But if that event can strongly see a super majority of round R witnesses, that event is defined to be round R plus one and so on. So in other words, an event is promoted to the next round when it can strongly see a super majority of the witnesses in the current round. Now, 
let's run an election for whether C2 is famous or not. So I've colored C2 actually gray out here and let's see whether it is actually famous. Now the red line shows that C3 can actually see C2. So C3 will vote yes for C2 stream. But there are actually no downward paths from A3, B3 or D3 to C2. So they all vote no. Now the votes are actually calculated by B4 again. And since it can see A3, B3, C3 and D3 strongly, it will therefore collect the votes from all of them. And the votes are no, no, yes and no. So the supermajority says it's a no. And the consensus decision is that C2 is not a famous node. Now there is a theorem that says that if any witness is able to decide yes or no, then that is the result of the election. And it is guaranteed that all other witnesses that decide are going to decide the same way. So in this example, B4 was able to decide the election. If it had collected the votes that were more evenly split between yes and no, then it would have failed to decide. In that case, we can consider D4. Now, if D4 also fails to decide, then perhaps A4 or C4 might decide it. And if none of the four witnesses can decide, then each of them will simply vote in accordance with the majority of the votes that they collect and voting yes in case of a tie. Now, in that case, it will be up to the round five witnesses to collect the votes from the round four witnesses, and perhaps the round five witnesses will be able to decide. The voting continues until it eventually reaches a round where some witnesses can decide the election. Now I've done the calculations for six more elections on a hash graph simulator and the famous nodes are as follows. There are A2, B2, D2, A1, B1, C1 and D1. Now in normal operations, most events are not witnesses. So there is no election for most events and most witnesses are declared famous with an almost unanimous vote in the first round of voting. So most elections do not actually last very long. Now we have to decide the fame of every witness in round two. Now, once a round has the fame decided for all of its witnesses, it is possible to find the round received and find the consensus timestamp for a new set of events. So let's start by considering the black event just below A2. Now, this event can be seen by every famous witness in round two that I've colored green. So these are the parts that they can see them by as I've just shown. And this merely requires seeing and not strongly seeing. Now, since the black event is seen by all of the famous witnesses in round two, it is said to have received a round two or basically the round received is number two. Now let's come to the consensus timestamps. Now the consensus timestamp for the black event can be found as follows. So firstly, we find the earliest event X by Alice. That is an ancestor of A2 and a descendant of the black event. So basically this yellow event out here that we see is the node that we are talking about. Now we have to similarly do the same thing for B, C and D. So similarly, we find the earliest event Y by Bob. That is the ancestor of B2 and a descendant of the black event. And similarly, we find an event Z by Dave and then take the timestamps of the event XYZ that were put in those event by the creators. Sort all the timestamps in order. Take the middle one from the list or the second of the middle two if they were an even number. And this median timestamp is actually the consensus timestamp for the black event which will then stand as a timestamp for all the transactions contained in that event. Now consider the gray event below B2. It is seen by B2, but not seen by A2 or D2. So it was not seen by all the famous witnesses in round two. So it's received a round that is later than two. Let us stay colored gray to indicate that it still hasn't received a round. We find the consensus for the six black events and the four dark green events. Now these are the 10 events that have received a round of two. And we need to sort these 10 events into an order that all the members will agree upon. Now this agreed order is the consensus order and this is done by sorting them in the order that they receive their rounds. So this process of voting, sorting transactions in order of timestamps and their round receives keeps continuing and the system serves as a list of all the ordered transactions that have been served on the network. Okay guys, so that was about hash graphs. I hope you understood this new and upcoming technology. If you have any questions, please don't forget to leave them down in the comment section below. And if you did understand anything about hash graphs, don't forget to leave a like. That's it from me. Goodbye.